Hello guys again. In the previous video, I talked about the basic principles of the method of consistent deformation. So in this video, we're going to do an example in beams. Imagine that you have this beam and the problem is asking you to do determine the reactions and the shear bending moment and the diagrams using the method of consistent deformations. Remember the name, consistent deformation, forces, compatibility, superposition, flexibility. And there is a condition which shouldn't exist because you should be able to select whatever redundant you want to, but the condition is select the reaction and the interior support in order to solve the problem. And you can see here that the, this section has double of the moment of inertia of this section here. So let's do that problem. First, you have to realize that it's a statically indeterminate problem because otherwise we shouldn't be trying to do this. So it's indeterminate and it has one redundant, one extra equation that we have to eliminate. The problem is already telling you to eliminate the interior support. When you eliminate the interior support, this beam remains stable, but now it's statically determinate. The, the basic of the principle, remember, is applying compatibility equations in order to find the redundant that we don't know. So first, second step is calculate the deflection at the point where you are eliminating the reaction. How do we do that? In this case, I'm using virtual work for that. And if you remember virtual work for that, you have to find the work produced by externals and the work produced by internal forces. Now you have to do the summation. In order to find that deflection, you have to do the summation of the deformation in the real structure, if you want to call it real. And these are the forces in the virtual structure. For this type of particular type of beam, this is the real structure, if you want to call it like that this one and we have to calculate the deflection here and this will be the virtual structure where we basically apply a unit load in the direction that we need opposite in this case you can put it in the same direction but it doesn't make any sense because this plus this should be zero and that's the basics of the system so what we are going to do we're going to find the moment equation the moment functions here and here and for that, we start by doing the section in this point. When you do the section in that point, if we measure x from this point, and that goes from 0 to 25, and it says here 2e, but it, say, it should say 2i, not 2e, okay? Disclaimer, 2i. The e is constant, not the i. When you do moment at this point, the equation for the moment will be this moment, m, minus 60 times x and this value is 3 so there's going to be an equivalent force here of 3 times x and the location is x divided by 2 and you come with that equation if you do the same section here at this point it will be easier because in this case the only thing that you have here is negative 3a you have a moment here so it will be plus m plus 3a times x equals 0. When you solve for that m, you get that. When you do the second section in this point, remember you are measuring x now from this location, and the moment has to be according to the moment convention going in this way. So you, you should say here for this section, once again, this is not e, this is i. It should be m plus 3 times x times x divided by 2 or minus minus m minus 3 times x plus x times x divided by 2 plus 60x equals 0 and then you can solve for your moment equation and if you do the same section here then you will have negative m minus 5x x equals 0 and then you can solve for your small m now we have to calculate the coefficient of flexibility as well as the deformation. For the coefficient of flexibility, we're going to use only these two equations because these are repeated. It's like calculating again the deflection here, and you already know the functions. So the only thing that you have to do for this case, the big M and the small M are going to be the same value. You don't have to rework anything for doing that. 
In the real structure, and notice that I put real in quotation marks because this is not the real structure, this is the virtual structure that is going to help us to calculate our reaction. Then you have for the section 1 and for the section 2, once again remember 2i and i, not e. And you just apply the summation of that. So 1 divided by ei, 1 half, because this time you have 2i here, 2i and 0 to 25 this is the 0 to 25 that is in here and you multiply both equations this times this and then you go from 0 to 15 which is the other end and then you have 60 minus 3x squared divided by 2 multiplied by negative 5x of x only one i in this case and then you can calculate your delta v this is the deflection in this statically determined beam for the coefficient of flexibility, remember we have this. So basically we are squaring this up. This is extremely easy. When you apply your equation, the only thing that you have to do is get this equation. And because you are multiplying this times this, is the same thing as saying a square. And this times this is the same thing as saying it square. And remember this is 2i and this is i. Then the coefficient of flexibility will be this. And now you apply your compatibility equation. So delta V plus the coefficient of flexibility times the reaction here that is the one that we are looking for should be zero and you can solve for Vy. And then you can get your value very easy for Ey. Another thing that you can notice here is I didn't divide by Ei because it doesn't work it. These and these are gonna cancel out. So why are you gonna divide here, here and divide here and then divide again these by these? So just keep it like that and these and these cancel out and then you can find your reaction. This reaction is positive, meaning the direction that I applied this was also positive, and that's going to be the direction of the reaction. If by any chance I got a negative sign here, that would mean that my reaction should go pointing downward, but this is not the case. Once you have that reaction, you just can apply moment here, for example, and calculate that, and do summation of forces in Y and calculate both of them. And after you have that, the rest is just easy peasy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. You just do your shear and moment diagrams and that will be it. I hope that you like it and in the next video I'm going to do another example now with a frame. See you later guys.